Randy Kay here. We all go through struggles at times, and I want to share with you through stories and insights and interviews with others how much God loves you. He loves you immensely, and that's what I hope you will hear through our interviews and what we have to share with you. Thanks for staying tuned. Here we go. Hello, Randy Kay here, and welcome to this episode of the Heaven Series. I have a a guest that is going to really bless us today. His name is Israel Shalom. And with a name like that, how can it not be a blessing? Uh, Israel comes to us uh, with a background and a heritage, uh, both in uh, uh, Jewish heritage and also uh, Spanish heritage from uh, Puerto Rico. But most importantly uh, for this episode is that he's going to tell us about his experiences, plural, in heaven. And Israel has become a friend of of mine uh, by virtue of our trading uh, back and forth on social media because we were praying for him uh, in the hospital. He developed COVID. And then uh, we don't know if his heart had clinically stopped, but it certainly was a concern to the clinicians enough so that it seemed to be, uh, and that he went in and out of consciousness. Uh, during this COVID episode where he was in critical condition. And so he's going to tell us about his experience in heaven then then, uh, during this hospitalization, but also if it goes way back to uh, when he was 21 years of age, when uh, he experienced his first encounter with with the Lord and angels in heaven. So uh, Israel, welcome to our show. Amen. Randy, God bless you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And my, my name here, in, in my, real, my real name is, they call me Israel Shalom because of my Facebook. But my real name is, I, I should tell you, my real name is Edgar. And, but in Facebook, it's Israel Shalom because of the, of the passion that I have for the people of Israel and for the passion that I have for my Yeshua, his Hebrew name, Jesus, um, in Hebrew is Yeshua. Yes, amen. Yes. Well, we have a love for the Jewish people, and and uh, we are broadcasting in some instances to uh, to Israel. So uh, we love our uh, Jewish brothers and sisters. Uh, some are are uh, believers in Yeshua as the Messiah, and others uh, are not yet there. So regardless, we uh, we bless them. Uh, so. Uh, Israel, let's start off with, uh, you have these uh, paintings in the background and there's yes. meaning to those. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit before we get into the heaven portion of your experiences, what those, what those mean. My passion for painting have happened to me since I was a little boy. I used to paint, you know, we like using a notebook and stuff like that. And in school, I used to do a lot of art and they would like love my paintings and stuff like that. Then I stopped painting. And then years later, like um, I started painting again, like in 2009, then I stopped. And then um, because my mother, um, in 2015, my mother got real sick from congestion heart failure. And that hit me real, real, real hard. And, and, and then she passed away in 2017. And since 2017, I went back to the painting. Like the Lord wanted me like, to get into something, not to get like sad because of, of, the, of my mother passing away because I know where she is right now, you know? And the painting in the back, it, it has a lot of meaning for many paintings that I have here. Um, the one that you see in the back is a man that I saw in one of my vision. And every time, and I'm going to let you know, I cry for nothing. <laughs> when I feel the Holy Spirit, I just start crying because it's, I don't know what the things that the Lord been doing in my life is, in, is, I cannot explain. And I know we are living in the end times and I know we're living in the last days or whatever a lot of people want to call it, you know, and I know what's happening right now around the world. What we're praying for what's happening right now in Russia and in Ukraine. He has everything in control. He knows why he isn't allowing it. But the painting in the back, I, I saw that man, this man, I saw him in one, in, in one of my vision when I was going through my COVID. Um, I'm still, I can't believe it. I got, I, I, I got um, recovered from COVID. I've been almost um, two months. It's gonna, next month is gonna be three months, of course, in the 2017. And I still, you know, I, my voice is still a little bit bad. Um, my, 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 right, my, my left eye um, got hit real bad with COVID and I'm still, I'm still here. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I worship the Lord because for this, for this opportunity he gave me, 
you know, I, I, I was, I would never think that I would have, I would get attacked, you know, with COVID. And then the other painting that you see down here is, a, is another, is, is a painting of a woman that I saw in my experience. And then this painting right here is the painting of um, the heaven experience that I had in, in, in the hospital. And then the one down here is about an angel, one of the angels I saw. I mean, God been doing, I mean, I don't know what's happening. Um, oh, I could tell you, Randy, that when I, when I, I'm, I've been experienced uh, um, in YouTube, I'm, I've been looking at videos about, about people who have the experience of the afterlife. Since 2016, I've been like, I gotta, I gotta like, I have to go to see, I mean, what, what is out there? You know, a lot of people's afraid to die. I'm not afraid to die. <laughs> I mean, I even told the Lord, hey, Lord, if the day you take me home, just do it fast because I don't want to go through all that pain. I told the Lord because when I was with COVID, I was scared. I, I mean, I couldn't breathe. I mean, it, it, it was horrible. And, but um, it, it's, it's, I mean, it started like, like um, in November. In November of uh, Thanksgiving of 2021, we had a Thanksgiving dinner with the family. Nothing big, you know, because of the COVID and not the gathering with family, you know, blah, blah, blah. And um, right there, uh, my, my son-in-law's family was here. A friend of mine who's a pastor was also here. And then um, when, make the long story short, um, everybody started coughing and they were like getting sick. And, and I had this medicine and I was like, y'all better drink some medicine because I don't want nobody to get sick. And I have three granddaughters. And um, I was thinking about my, my, my little granddaughters. You know, I have um, Evangelina, who is three years old. And I have Angelina, who is only like, in that time, she was only five months. five months, And, and that was like, well, like, like I said, that was in November, 2021. And, and then um, the other one, um, Anna Isabella, who also is, is, is five months and boom. It just happened. My son-in-law started getting sick. My daughter, my granddaughters, everyone. I'm telling you about everybody in Florida got sick. When they went back to Florida, they got sick. Um, I mean, my family in Puerto Rico, it was, it was something like I, I, I didn't, and then I started getting sick. I said, whoa. So I, I was like, this is a normal flu. This is only a flu. So I was, this is not happening. I don't believe it. This is not going to happen to my family. But the thing is, Randy, that when COVID hit my entire family, they all got sick, but it was nothing big, like a normal cold. They just stayed in the house. They lost their taste and smell. But I got hit bad. Mm -hmm. And I'm a man that, Randy, I take care of myself. I use vitamins. I mean, I take care of myself. I, I, but I got sick and I was like, it's like a normal cold but I was still in denial. This is not COVID. This is not COVID. So I went outside. I started doing some grocery shopping. I'm not supposed to do that. And then right there, when I went outside, I got worse. When I got worse, I, that was on a Thursday. And then Friday, Randy, oh my Lord, my fever was, I was burning with fever. My body was like, like crashing. I couldn't get out the bed. And then that was on that was on Friday. And then Saturday morning, I like to you know uh, do Shabbat because of my my belief. I couldn't even I couldn't even say I couldn't even say Shabbat Shalom <laughs> because I was I couldn't even speak. And then and then Sunday worse. And then um, Sunday night, I, I I remember I couldn't even go up the stairs because I live in the in the two floor house. And I, I, I sleep, I'm the only one who sleep upstairs. I have my prayer room. This is my prayer room. This is my, my, my studio when I do recordings with Facebook Live. My room is right here. And, and I, I, something told me, go to the hospital. And I started praying. I said, Lord, why should I go to the hospital? I mean, by your stripe, I am here. You, the Bible said that you took all our, our infirmity to the cross. I was like being like that person, like superhero. This is not happening to me. I'm not going to accept this. And um, right there, I went downstairs and I couldn't go back upstairs. And I heard that voice speaking to me. You better tell your son-in-law to bring you your blanket and your pillow because you're not going to be able to go upstairs since you don't want to go to the hospital. Then my wife in Dominican Republic, she was calling me. 
And she was like, you need to go to the hospital, my daughters, everyone. But I didn't want to go to the hospital. I mean, I'm, I had never been in a hospital. The last time I was in a hospital, I was seven years old, you know? And, and, and I'm right here in my, I'm going to say my age, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 54. And I said, I don't want to be in a hospital where I only have a simple cold. But this was not a simple cold. I thought it would go away. I would take Tylenol. It would relieve a little bit of pain. But then four hours later, Randy, it would just come back. I couldn't even make it to the bathroom. I couldn't walk to the bathroom. I couldn't breathe. My stomach was going in because I couldn't breathe. I started throwing up mucus. Like I never throw up. I started throwing up the mucus. And I would say, Lord, I told the Lord, Randy, I told the Lord, if I'm going to go home, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready. If I'm going to go, just take care of my family, take care of my grandkids. And, and right there, um, I went to sleep. And then next day, that was um, um, Monday, worse. I got worse. I couldn't breathe. And then around um, that Monday in the morning, I, I had to go to the bathroom. And I right there, Randy, boom, everything came out of me. I couldn't even make it to the bathroom. So I, I, I went back to the, to the couch and I, I, I went and I went to, and I, I drove myself to the couch and, I, and I, I couldn't breathe. And I started going like this. And then my eyes started shining. I said, I'm not going to go to sleep. I'm not going to go to sleep. I'm not, and then boom, right? I, I slept. And when I slept, I felt my spirit came out of my body. And right there, Randy, right there, I saw four men dressed in these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful clothing in white, bright yellowish white colors and they they went like this to me like this they wasn't speaking they just went like this to me and and they had these beautiful crowns around their forehead not up here around their forehead and there were four men and they told me come like with a hand they didn't speak and I left and I went with them and when I went with them I saw this other man at a door, but this door was bright. It was beautiful with gold. And I, I, these things are so hard to describe. I mean, we see colors here on earth. We see we, the way we paint our apartments, the way we, we, we color the doors or whatever, the way we decorate our Christmas tree. But those colors that I seen, that I saw that, that in that door was I never seen. And I like to paint. And I cannot even, I cannot even match those colors. Right there, I saw this man, his head, like, like from here, his arm only. And then he was going to the, to, he went to the first man, he went like this. And when he went like this, the man just went through the door. And then the second went through the door. And then the third, he was going, he went to the door. And then the fourth, when it was my time, he went like this to me. And when I got closer, he stand in front of me. And when he stand in front of me, Randy, right there, he went like this to me. And when I, he went like this, I saw his face. This face that I, you see, I, I, I tried to paint it, but this is the man that I saw. His eyes, Randy, his eye was so beautiful. The color of his eyes, the way they changed, I don't know, I don't know, they were like brownish or they were like, like olive green. And then his hair was open in the middle. I mean, the way people paint him, like with this long hair, well, I didn't saw that long, long hair. His hair was like, like maybe to here. And he had this beautiful, gorgeous shawl. And he told me like this, no. I just smile, his lip right here was, was his like, I don't know, I don't, know. his beard. He had this beautiful fat beard, but it was so firm, it was not big. It was so firm. He had two colors, maybe like light brown, dark brown. And he was like my color, but a little bit darker. And, and he told me, he didn't spoke to me. He just went like this to me. And he told me, you need to go back. He went like this to his wizard and he told me, go back. And right there, I, I went back into my couch and I got up. <coughs> it was around Israel in the morning. So mm -hmm. this was, if I could just um, mm -hmm. ask you a question, please. So... So this picture in the background there, mm -hmm. that is your portrayal of this figure who, who is uh, Jesus then, the, the, appeared to you. Yes, because when, when I saw him, I knew Randy in, in, inside my heart, that man is Yeshua, our coming king, our king. I knew this is him. 
but you could feel it. And he was, like I said, he was a beautiful, beautiful, like, like I don't know, so beautiful. I, I never seen a, a man like that in my life. I mean, I have my nephews, I have my, my son-in-law, myself, you, we are, we are all God crea creation. But him, oh Lord. Yeah, that's an aspect of uh, Jesus that almost is unfathomable um, in this world because it's the glory mm -hmm. of God resting on Jesus, the beautiful illuminating glory of God. So you see a man in your picture there seem to, seems to exhibit a characteristic that is apart from this world that is truly um, of a God nature. That is, there's, there's the holiness the brilliance of his glory that is with is that is not just resting within him, but is him. I mean, right. that's the personhood of, of the Lord mm -hmm. uh, right there mm -hmm. that you saw. Yeah. So you are um, Israel. You are. Do you want me to call you? I, I call you Israel because I love the name Israel. Nope. I'm so, fine with okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everybody um, calls me Israel. Yes. Okay. So Israel, you <laughs> had an experience where you were out basically mm -hmm. and we know that uh in the in the cases with covid that can happen there can be sudden cardiac arrest right we don't know obviously you were not in the hospital at this point but you are completely out and you are meeting jesus at this point and you have these other figures as well that you are seeing and you said that jesus did this like this he went like this to me no. meaning that that you no, do, you're not going to, that I'm not taking you? Or what do you think that was about? I would dare say that it was not my time um, because the way he went, when he sang went like this and then he went like, go back. And when he, when he went like that, my spirit went back into my body immediately. And when I woke up, I was back in my pain and my, I couldn't breathe. And right then my son-in-law, he, he just got up, he was going to go to work. And he told me, he, he calls me pop and he called me pop. I, 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 you look horrible. And I was looking at him and I was still looking at him. I could still see this little Lord. I could still see Yeshua and I could still see him, but I was seeing like it was turning into Yeshua and my son-in-law. And I was looking at him and I said, Jay, his name is Jay. I said, Jay, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I need to go to the hospital. And um, right there, he said, you know, um, they call my daughters and yes, Yes, and, and that's when they took me to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing like uh, not being able to breathe. I had that as well, Israel, as you may know. For mine was some pulmonary embolism, which is essentially blood clots, mm -hmm. including the, uh, the main artery to the lungs, so not getting any uh, oxygen. Mm -hmm. It's a terrible thing to go through. And I think this is obviously very relevant because I know a number of people have either... Um, have seen blood ones who have experienced COVID. Some mm -hmm. have experienced those who have died. I know, I think um, at least two, maybe three that have, have, uh, have died from, uh, yes. from COVID. So they rushed you to the hospital from there that yes. 911 and, and that you're was, off to the hospital. <laughs> let well, me let, yes, but it, 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 I was, I was still being stubborn and I, I still didn't want to go to the hospital. And then it came at nighttime. So it was past midnight already. And it was always um, um, Tuesday morning. And right there, my daughter said, dad, you need to go to the hospital. And right there, they didn't took me directly to the hospital. They took me to urgent care. And when they took me to urgent care, because I did it, I mean, I don't know how long I was going to wait in the hospital, but it was a mistake. When my daughter took me to urgent care, I was, I was sitting in the, in the seat where they, by, you know, where it took, I could, they could call my name. And I was like, I'm going to die right here. I'm going to die right here. And then this guy who, there was a lot of people there. And that day was snowing and it was ice snow. And right there, this guy started I'm complaining. I've been here for five hours and you guys have started calling me. And I look at the guy and I interrupt him. And I try to speak to him. I say, sir, how long you been here? And he looked at me and said, I've been here for five hours. So my daughter got up and she went to the front and she told the nurse, my dad can breathe. And I know you know what's happening there. So he needs to see someone now. And she said, there's nothing we can do. 
she needs to wait is seven hours per per per, per, per patient mm. seven hours i told my daughter i'm not gonna make it so my daughter said dad i'm gonna call albany medical center albany is not far from here so it's like 25 minutes driving so when she and the nurse was telling her, oh, if you call Albany Medical Center, you're wasting your time because it's eight hour waiting. I was like, oh, my Lord. But guess wow. this is this 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 was a plan of the enemy to, to try to take my life away. I, I mean, I mean, because I was going to die right there. I was going to die. Mm. Then then she called the hospital and, and, and she told the hospital, my dad is here at urgent care. He can breathe, and I have a feeling he has COVID. Please, why could, why could you help him? You know what she told her in the phone? She told her, listen, the night is very cold. There's no one here. Bring your father. We're going to wait for him at, uh, at the emergency room. My daughter grabbed me through the coat, and I couldn't even get up. She took me in the car. She drove so fast in the ice. I was like, oh, <laughs> Lord, take care of us. It was ice outside. And she drove to Albany Medical Center, Randy. And when she arrived to Albany Medical Center, she dropped me up at the emergency um, 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 care unit. And right there, when I entered, there was a security guard and he gave me your ID and I gave him my ID. And then he said, are you okay? I was like, I, I was standing around the, but when you stand, it's worse, you can't breathe. You can. So I was like, I was going like this. I was like, I, I don't know. And then he said, sit right there, don't worry. He was so nice. Then my daughter came in, she was parking in the car. She came in, in inside the, uh, the hospital. And in five minutes, Randy, they call me. When they call me, they say, Edgar, I say, yes. And then they, they, she took me to, and she, she started putting all the vitals, my, my um, you know, the oxygen that they put in your finger and, and all the stuff they put in. That girl, Randy, she started getting scared. She, she got up, she got up and she started going back and she said, I'm sorry but I need to do something. And I looked at her, I said, what's wrong? Don't worry. So she pressed this button, like cold, like a cold button. And she pressed it and they said, listen, we need to take you in because you have COVID. I, I mean, I, I haven't got tested, but she was saying I have COVID. And my oxygen was only like a, I think it was 77. Randy, 77 from 98. My yeah. oxygen went to 70. Anything below 95 is uh, can be critical. Anything yes. below 90 yes. that is, can be very, um, can be life threatening. Yes. And right there, when they took me, they, 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 they took my shirt off, they put an IV, they put me and they gave me oxygen. When they put the oxygen, I went like, oh, finally I can breathe. And I started breathing and breathing and breathing. And I heard Randy. In the hospital, I heard that voice, that man voice telling me, Edgar, I want you to stay in the hospital because I want to speak to you alone. The reason he told me this, because I am always distracted at the home. I like to cook. I take care of my granddaughters. I, you know, I'm, I'm a, I have three granddaughters. They, I, I mean, and my daughters, my, my, my son alone, and I'm, I'm always painting. I'm, and I'm in my room praying or what. I have so much thing to do in the house. So right there, I was like, I was in my mind, I was saying, why? Why? I don't want to be in a hospital. Nobody, especially us guys, <laughs> you know, it's like, we hate the hospital. I don't like the hospital. And, you know, and right there, Randy, I heard that voice stay. And I was looking at my daughter and, and, and then they, they, they started doing the, the COVID test and they started doing x-ray on my chest and all these um, tests on me. Two hours later, they came into the room. This nice doctor nurse, um, um, lady doctor, I'm sorry, she told me, you, your, your COVID test came out positive. And not only that, you had no pneumonia? Pneumonia, Pneumonia, yes. There you go. And, and, um, and even bronchitis, everything was complicated. I was like, wow. And I looked at her and then she said, we're leaving you. We, we, need you. we are admitting you to the hospital. And I started telling her, no, I don't want to stay. And then she said, Edgar, you need to stay. And then my daughter, she, she, she got up and she said, and she said, dad, please stay. And then the, the nurse, um, I mean, the doctor said, you want to look, look at your, at your x-ray? And then right there, she, she, my x-ray pictures were right there and she turned on the light 
And when she turned on the light, Randy, I couldn't even see nothing. Everything was covered in this white mucus. And I said, those are my lungs? And she said, yes. I was asking, where's my heart? And she said, that's the thing. We want to know where is your heart because your heart is under stress. She told me my heart was like, instead of straight, my heart was down because it was covered with water. So they, would, they wanted to know if the water was coming from my heart, which I was praying no, because my mother died of congestion and heart failure, or it was coming from my lungs. And then she told me, the, the doctor told me, do you love your daughters? I said, of course I love my daughter. And then she told me, do you love your wife? I said, yes, I do. And then my daughter interrupted and she said, if I take him home, what's gonna happen? And she told me, you want me to be honest with you? If you take him home, maybe like four hours, he will, he, you will not bring him here to the emergency room and you will take him to the morgue. He's gonna be gone. Um, he could go into cardiac arrest, he could get a, um, a stroke and he could die immediately. So right there, I looked at her and I looked at my daughter and I said, I'll stay, I'll stay. I don't wanna die until I stay. And if I die, I, must, I wasn't even scared to die. I was just thinking about my children. I was thinking about my daughters, my, my grandkids. I mean, you know how it is. And right there when they, like a few hours later, maybe like an hour, it was almost six in the morning, Randy. They took me upstairs. Um, these people came with these masks and these cover with all these things, um, garments that they had. And they had it to cover my daughter also. And right there, they took me upstairs, Randy. And when they took me upstairs, they, I couldn't even get out from the, from, from, from the other bed to the other bed. So they had it to grab me and throw me in the bed. I'm, and I, 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 I started losing weight like crazy. I'm, right now, I'm only like, I weigh like 173. Like two months ago, I was weight, my weight was 192. So in a way, I like it because I lost a little bit of weight. It's good to me, you know, so I lost a little bit of weight. So right there when, when they, they put me in the bed, Randy, and I told my daughter, go home, mama, go home. You need to go home and get some rest. So everybody left the room. She left the room. They only allow one person to spend time with the person who has COVID. They won't allow no one else. You know how it is. And right there, um, she left. And when they, they, the nurse came in, she told me, do you want me to open the window, the, the shade? I said, no, no leave it dark, I wanna stay in the dark. Everything was bothering the lights, even the tiniest light was, the head, it was, my head, it was horrible. I couldn't even spend time on the phone because the light of the phone would hurt my eyes. And right there when the, everybody left the room, I, I was in the bed and right there, I heard the voice saying, finally, Edgar, me and you are alone, rest. And right there, I went to sleep. So this is the, the same voice yes. that you heard, excuse me, um, that, that when you were on the floor unconscious mm -hmm. at home, and he was kind of like your coach at that, at that yes. point. He was telling you, you know, this is, it's, I want you alone. And, and uh, he, was, he was giving you comfort through this uh, process when you were um, you were in the stage of uh, potential death at this point or dying. Yes. Um, so you had this, this appearance of the figure that is behind yes. you, that is uh, Jesus, um, and he had you alone. Did he tell you why he wanted you alone? Is there something that, that went on during that uh, situation that caused you to understand why Jesus was bringing you to this point of I'm being alone with him at a, at a point of desperation? Yes, the, I, I, when he visited me here at my house in my living room, and, he, and, and when he went like this to me that it was not my time, he sent me back to my body. Then in the hospital, that's what I, I, I realized, this is the reason you want me alone because you wanna to speak to me. So when I was in the hospital, I, um, I, it was almost six in the morning, nothing happened. So around almost, almost 10 in the morning, they woke me up. I was so like tired. And when they woke me up, they, they had to do an emergency CT scan to, to see if I had um, blood clots in my lungs. So when this young man went into my room, he told me, we need to take you downstairs. I said, and I looked at him. I said, but I can't walk. I can't breathe. He said, don't worry. Oh, and let me remind you that they put the oxygen was, I don't know, 20. The, it's not, it was like my mother, when she was on oxygen, when she had congestion and heart failure, she was on a four and a seven, but my oxygen was on a 20. 
So they were blasting the oxygen. My nose, oh my Lord, that was burning me. So they, were, they had to blast the oxygen because my, I was real low. So when he, he, he told me to, he's gonna take me in a wheelchair. Right there, Randy, I couldn't, I started, I started gasping for air. He helped me, he put the oxygen, but he did a little mistake. Instead of leaving the oxygen from the wheelchair in the 20, he left it in the four. And again, I started struggling with air. So I took the oxygen, I went, I was going like this, breathing hard. So when he took me out of the room, he let me at, um, at, um, at uh, the corner of the um, nursing, where all the nurses are at, you know, the front desk, because he forgot to bring my folder um, with all my, my records. And, and then I, I, I was sitting down and right there, Randy was going like, I, I, I'm gonna die again. I'm gonna, I, I can't breathe. Right there, Randy, this woman, I don't know how to describe this woman came and she was like dressed like a doctor. She was dressed in a white garment, white, like a white vest, long vest. And she looked at me, she didn't have no mask. She didn't have nothing. And she had this beautiful eyes and this beautiful hair. And she this was at, not, uh, Israel, this was not uh, a nurse or a clinician this, or in the hospital. This was somebody in the spirit realm. Yes. yes. I mean, and yes, because I was, I was like, no, in, in me, I would say me, in me, this is a, she works here. She works here. She was like, um, she was white. She had this beautiful, like brownish hair, but she didn't have no mask. And, and it's mandatory when in the COVID unit, everybody had to wear all these attirements, you know, to keep, you know, to be safe. You know, they, they wear the mask, but they wear this plastic mask over your head and all these garments around them. But she didn't have that. She only had like a white, like a white long vest and she, and she looked at me and she said, are you okay? And I looked at her, she was so close like this. And I looked at her and I say, I went like with my head, like, Lani, no, I'm not okay. And then she told me, don't worry, you're gonna be fine. And then she, I saw when she put her, put her hand in my oxygen and she raised it to 20. Mm. And when she raised my oxygen to 20, I started breathing again. And, I, and, and she touched me and she told me, you're gonna be fine. And I was looking at this beautiful woman and said, who is she? I, I, she works there. I'm sure she works there, Randy. And I was like, and then when, when, when she left, I looked back and she was gone. Mm. And then the, the guy came back, the young man came back and he drove me to, to the um, to downstairs to the, to the main lab, um, lobby where they had the CT scan. And when I, and when I was arriving there, I saw two men waiting for me because I couldn't get up. They had to they got, grabbed me and I saw two guys at the glass who they were gonna do the exam, you know? And then he, and, and, and he told me, you're gonna be fine, don't worry. So he put me, he told me, put your hands like this. And I put my hand and they started putting me down. And I, I started, it was horrible. The breathing part is the horrible part, but they put the oxygen roof right there. I started breathing again. And then right there, when they, it was like a, maybe like a 30 second, it was a very fast CT scan. They put it um, and, and in, and I, I'm an IV, another, like an injection for like, a, I will feel like a metal feeling, you know, in my body. And I said, I know I've been, I mean, I had done, they had done a CT scan when I was, um, I was years ago um, for my stomach to, to, cause I had a bowel obstruction. That was, that was like um, in 2009, but nothing happened. Thank God I was home. So right there, when, when they did the CT scan, they took me out, they put me back in my, in my wheelchair. And one of the guys, nicely, he just said this nicely. I feel so bad for him. He's not gonna make him. He's not gonna make it. And I stopped the wheelchair and I told the guy to turn me around. And I looked at the guy and I looked at him and I said, I'm gonna make him. And then he said, I did not make to offend you. You know what I told him, Randy? You did not offend me. You're gonna be part of my testimony. <laughs> I told him, you're going to be part of my testimony. It's okay. So they took me upstairs. They put me back in the bed. And you know what I told the young guy that was helping me? I told him this word, God bless you. And you know what he said? I don't know why he said that. He said, no, God bless you. And he started saying aloud, God bless you. Like so loud. I said, amen, then God bless me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay. <clears throat> so right there. I went to sleep. I, I, and when I went to sleep, Randy, that's when I had the 
Um, no, no. First, that's when I, I heard a voice, a man, the man, the same man, the same voice. And he called me by my name. He said, Edgar. And I will open my eyes, Randy. Nobody was in the room. And I said, who's there? And, and then I, I, I heard my mother's voice also. And then she told me, Edgar, are you okay? And I went, no, 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 no. This is not happening to me. I was like, mm -mm. And I said, I did say mom. And then right there in front of the TV, I saw my mother. When I saw her, she was beautiful. She was so young. My mother, my, my mother, she would have been alive. Next month, she was going to be 80. But she passed away when she was 75. Of congestion and heart failure, she was a woman of God. Um, and when I saw her, I said, mom. I'm going to see you soon because I'm going to heaven. And she went like this to me. Mm -mm. She went, mm -mm. I said, why anybody keep saying no, <laughs> you know? And then she disappeared. And right there, I felt my, my, my body um, left, uh, my spirit left my body. And I was standing in, in the hospital, in the hospital, I was standing. And then he called me again. He said, Edgar. And then I said, who are you? And you know what he told me? He told me, I am. I say, okay, I am. I am. Whatever. Who are you? I am. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And right name there. That uh, Jesus called himself, mm -hmm. which is the Exodus name for God. Yes. I am. Yes. And then right there, Randy, he spoke to me. Let me, let, let me tell you this. I only could hear the voice, but I couldn't see him. I only saw him once in the picture. My name is, I did not see him in the hospital. And he said, Edgar, never again ever dare say that my judgment, I'm not true and real. So I started crying. I couldn't believe my spirit was crying. I felt tears coming out of my spirit. If, if I was a spirit, tears, I, could, I was crying. And I told Lord, when have I told you that your judgment are not real? I have, I, I would not even dare to offend you like that. Right there, Randy, he took me to this place, my home. And I saw myself praying in my room. And I was praying. I was saying, I don't believe in COVID. I believe that this is nothing but the enemy. This is a trick. This is blah, 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 the news and blah, blah, blah. I was like, I don't believe in this. I don't believe this is coming from God. And I don't think this is God doing this. Right then, when I saw myself praying like that, he told me, Edgar, I allow this to happen for a reason. The name of this plaque was made by men, COVID-19. But this, this plaque, I allow it for a reason. And he told me, who are you, Edgar, to dare say, that this is not real. When I allow 10 plaques in Egypt for let, they could let my people go, Israel, they could leave Egypt. I had to allow 10 plagues. And this is only one that's happening right now around the world. And when he told me that, he said, I allow this to hate you because I want to talk to you. I am going to heal you. I am going to take this away. Meanwhile, listen what I am speaking to you. And right there, Randy, I went, he, he, I went back to my, to my body and I woke up so weak. I was weak, but I was breathing better. So when I woke up and I, and I, I, was, I, I, I was in, my, in the hospital bed, they went to my room. The nurse came to my room. She was so sweet, that nurse. I went, I, God bless her. She came to mom and she said, you okay? And I said, and I looked at her, yes, why? Do you have any chest pain? I said, no. Are you dizzy? No. Why are you asking me these questions? And she said, because your heart is acting up and it's like, it's, it's showing that your heart stopped and we came here. And I said, well, I'm alive. I was, I'm okay. And then she, so said, she said that the monitor showed yes. a flat line. Yes. Is that what she was saying? Yes. That you had flatline. Yes. The heart had stopped. Like it was stopping. It was real low and it was stopping. Like it was, I was, I was going, I was gone. So she came into the room. 
Um, um, and I saw the machine to shock you. I saw the machine. I said, you ain't going to put that in my, in my I'm, I'm, I'm alive. You know? And then she said, let me check you. So she, she opened my shirt and then she started checking my, the, the things on the heart. And then when she looked at the battery, the battery was completely gone, black, burned out. And she said, this is weird. I just put the new battery. Why is, how could a new battery just, I said, I don't know. So she took it out. She put the new battery and my heart started going, beep, you know, and the machine started going beep, 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 beep. I said, oh, okay, it's back. And then are you sure you're fine? I said, yeah, I'm fine. <clears throat> and then I told her, because when she was speaking to me, Randy, my room in the hospital was all white. It was a white room. They had no colors. It was, everything was painted white. And right then when she was, when she was speaking to me, I saw this beautiful, beautiful painting coming out from the walls, all over the room, all over the room, started these colors. And I see little, I, I saw little, um, little kids playing with balls. I saw um, um, this river. I saw these people like, like, dressed in this beautiful beautiful i was looking i was right there and i was looking at that and i thought are you are they giving me anything like in my in my IV? And she said no are we giving you this red for for covid um and steroid and not and um for your lungs and and of course that's that was rising my sugar real high and um she told me why and then i thought do you see that and then she looked in the back she said see what i see a lot of people in back of you and she looked, and you know what she told me? Are you a Christian? I said, yes, I am. Do you, and then she told me, do you believe in Jesus? I said, I believe in Yeshua, Jesus. Yes, I do. And you know what she told me? Enjoy your time with Jesus in this room. Something is happening in this room. Somebody is watching over you. Enjoy mm -hmm. your time. And I said, amen, mm -hmm. thank you. And then she left. Mm hmm mm-hmm. So the presence of the Lord, he wanted to have that time with you. And, and that time with you was obviously in, in, in healing you from the COVID eventually, mm -hmm. but there, they, he used this person, you know, the Bible talks about that we will entertain angels unaware. Yes. So mm -hmm. we don't know who this person was that you saw when you were this I, woman who didn't have the protective gear on. Uh, I asked that, for her. Yeah, what's that? I asked for her. I remember, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. I remember that I told the nurse that day, and I said, who, wh where's the lady um, that, that, that she writes up my oxygen? She, she put it back into a 20. And then she told me, what lady? Well, it was like a doctor. She had this beautiful hair, and she was like kind of white, but she, she didn't have no mask. She had nothing, and she had this white lawn, um like a long jacket or vest, I don't know. I know she was a doctor. And she looked at me and she told me, Edgar, no one in this unit is allowed without a mask and their retirement, whatever. If I come to your room without a mask right here, I will be fired from my job. I will lose my job. I said, no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. I went like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> she told me, describe her again. I said, she was a white woman. She had this beautiful hair like to her shoulder. She had these beautiful eyes and I know she was a doctor, and, and, but she didn't have no mask. And then she said, maybe you were entertained by something else. I said, well, I believe then she was an angel. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm a person about um, where the angel things about if they are male or they are female. Well, the, 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 my experience with the angels, they are males. Maybe other people had the other experience with women angel. It could happen. I mean, it could happen. There's a lot of mysterious things that we don't know, Randy, that is out there in the spiritual realm. You know, well, we have, you know, we've had a number of people who have described angels in their experience, and I have uh, experienced them as well. To me, they were genderless. Right. You know, uh, male, female, I know uh, all of the angels described in the Bible had male names. Mm -hmm. But uh, they had uh, an appearance that that was um, maybe more manly than than womanly. But nonetheless, it you know it's something that I don't feel is critical in terms of uh, our uh, theological interpretation. I I think there's a certainly that that there's a there's an appearance of the angel. But more importantly, this was this was not somebody 
in the hospital that was a flesh and blood. This was somebody that God had used, uh, mm -hmm. a spirit person uh, to come to you. And, right. um, and more than likely uh, an angel. But uh, I, I can't help but notice, uh, uh, Israel, the, the painting there that you have with this beautiful woman that mm -hmm. uh, is in the picture there. Uh, did you, is that her? Is that yes. the one you saw? Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. that, I think you painted oh, no, that. No, no, no. That woman, oh. that, this, this woman, this yes. woman, I, this is the woman that I saw in heaven. Okay. In heaven. So uh, I know that I don't want to uh, shortchange the experience mm -hmm. in the hospital with COVID. Mm -hmm. I know that you recovered, obviously. We were praying for you. And I saw the pictures and you were at a point of desperation. You had uh, all of the breathing gear. And uh, you were in isolation and uh, you were in a uh, critical uh, condition at, at that point, mm -hmm. uh, you know, about as severe as you can be uh, with, with COVID. And that's a great fear. Mm -hmm. So I know that you have had experiences in, in heaven. And since you have these two, uh, two paintings that you've done, can, can you explain to us those as well? Yes. The, the second night uh, at the hospital, um, it was around seven in, uh, in the evening, um, the nighttime, I, my, um, my son-in-law came to see me. And when he came to see me, I mean, Randy, a lot of people say, how was your, how was your, did you like the hospital? What I could say is it was one of the, the best nine days of my life. I was nine days in the hospital. I think it was one of the best. Long time. Yes, the best because it's like every day was not like every day. Like I had this experience when he came. My my son-in-law. I I was just staring at the wall because I could still see all these painting people playing, little boys. Like I was looking. I was I was like I don't need a TV. I could I enjoy myself here with all these things in the wall. It was like the the paintings. I don't know. It was like real. And right then, my son came in. My son-in-law. And when he came, are you okay? I say, I'm fine. And then he, I was looking at him and then this, this person was standing in back of him. And I turned, and I turned and Jay, do you see those people in back of you? And he said, he looked at, he said that his head was standing. And I say, I don't see anyone back of me, Pop. Don't, don't scare me. I say, I'm not scaring you. But anyway, let's let it be. He stood there for a while. Then he left. Then around 9.45 in the night time, I, I was, I, I started getting tired. So I went to sleep. I couldn't move in the bed because this, you know, how hospital beds are and I had all these stuff on me. So I couldn't like turn like the way I like to turn when I'm in bed. So I would just sleep in my bed. I would put my head like this. And right there, the bed of the hospital started moving like an earthquake. I started laughing. I said, here we go again. <laughs> so I said, no, 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 no. This is not gonna happen. So I opened my eyes and I was in the hospital. So I said, hmm, nothing. So I went back to sleep. And then right there, the bed started moving like an earthquake again. You know, said, so let's go with the flow. So right there, the bed was moving up um, like a roller coaster. Like when you're in a roller coaster ride, it was going up, 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 up. And, but this, the way I was feeling was going like sideways, like up, up, real, real. And I was like, I just could imagine. I'm here sleeping and I was, I was, I just could imagine when this hits down, just like in a roller coaster, I'm gonna get the giggling in the stomach. You know, so right there, the bed stopped. When the bed stopped, I opened my eyes. And when I opened my eyes, I was standing in this, in this beautiful place, like in this painting. When I saw this beautiful bright light, these beautiful trees and the color of the, the sand, it was like, I saw sand but it was like gold. It, I would jump and jump and jump and, the, and diamonds was coming out of the, the floor. And then I saw these six people in front of me and they were like three women and three guys, three men. And they were like, like they were, they, the guy had these beautiful garments. They, like, like, they, like they were like a prince. And the woman with this beautiful dress the color that they had was gold, beige, and white. I remember those three colors. And when I saw them and then they were looking at me and I was, and I was like, when I was looking at this beautiful place 
And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, they say, I know where I am. I'm in heaven and I'm staying. <clears throat> and I started jumping like a little boy, Randy, like a little boy, this energy. And I started jumping and jumping. I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. And they started laughing at me. These people started laughing at me. The, the, the way they were laughing and laughing. And I looked at them. I said, why are you laughing at me? I'm in my resting place. I'm here. I made it. I didn't went to no judgment. I didn't went nowhere. <coughs> I was standing in this place. And then the lady, like the one you see here in this picture, right here, let me, let me, and the, this lady, I, 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 I remember because I, 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 could, I could still see her. She came to me and she had this beautiful long hair. And she was so young because I don't, I, I didn't stop old people. They were young. These people were young. And I'm, I'm 50, I'm going to be 54. And I, I felt it like I was 17. And she touched me. And when she touched me, she said, Edgar, we are not laughing at you. We are laughing because you are jumping like a little boy. And yes, <clears throat> you are in heaven. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's what she's saying. This woman that we see in the bottom right uh, corner, that's a beautiful <laughs> painting there. Mm -hmm. You're very gifted, very anointed uh, with that. I just, uh, may I make a comment, uh, Israel, that, uh, you know, I've had um, the opportunity to be with a number of people uh, that were in the process of dying. <clears throat> and there's a dynamic going on that um, uh, one of one of my uh, favorite ways of putting it uh, as far as this process of dying and transitioning from this world uh, to the next is that um, at one point, the person becomes more, is more in heaven than they are on earth. Yes. That is, they're in a spiritual, and I believe it's the preparation the Lord gives for those who are at the point of uh, dying uh, or are going to die right. or have uh, you know, it eventually died, uh, where they then become uh, more in heaven. And it's a transition similar analogous to what we would have in, in terms of becoming more familiar with an environment that was very different. So our spiritual body then begins to take a more uh, dominant position or soul more dominant position uh, within our personhood during that process. And I believe that's what was going on with you. Um, I can tell you because I've had this clinical background in my career. Most of my career was in that environment. <coughs> and, uh, and I can tell you I have the, uh, still have the cough, the residuals. So you had probably the most, my, um, uh, one of my sons is a, an ER physician. You had probably one of the most, the worst, the, one of the worst cases of COVID of, uh, of anyone who's gone through that and is talking today. Yes. I mean, from where you were at 20% oxygen, uh, you know, a person legitimately can't really survive that. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the pictures and I knew your account when you were going through the hospital, you know, during this, I wasn't there physically, but I, you know, we were going back and forth and people were praying for you, hundreds or thousands of people praying for you at that time. And, and you really are a walking miracle mm -hmm. because um, the fact that you're talking with us, but but God had transported you to these places. Mm -hmm. Going back to the woman there in the bottom right, I was also giving you a break from your, uh, you know, you had to get some yeah. water there. So. <laughs> um, she, she's talking with you at the time. Yes. We're going to assume, I guess, that, that this is an angel and you had people that you were seeing in heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, those may be people that were in heaven, the glory of heaven coming through from the throne of God that you see in the painting there. Yes. Did she... What was she saying to you in terms of what you were saying? There's meaning behind everything in heaven. Nothing, everything is intentional and everything is spoken from the heart of our Lord Yeshua. So what was she uh, kind of elucidating or explaining to you um, as to what was going on and why the Lord was showing this to you? Well, when she came to me, when she put her hand in, in, in my in next, like she hold me like this, and when she was holding me, I looked at her. She was so close. Like I said, she, this, she was beautiful, maybe in her 30s. 
her hair was so long and it, and her is shining gold and all these people were shining and I, I this and I tried to look in back of her and I could still see this beautiful city this beautiful place and when I was looking at it the light in the trees in the tree was calling my attention so so strong that beautiful it did it, it was so, so bright that I I went out there said I had like it blurred me or nothing I was I just could stare at it and then when she told me she told me we are not laughing um we're not laughing about you we are laughing because you look like a little like a little boy jumping and yes you are in the in heaven this is part of heaven in other words i would i believe that heaven is huge is is it, i even tell people <clears throat> i don't know am i wrong I, I i even tell people i think heaven is like another planet you know it's like it's not like it's like it's bigger than earth <clears throat> and and when she she um she told me that light calls your attention. And Mariah said, yes. And then she said, go, go, keep walking to the trees and right there you are going to rest. And she walked with me and I was starting, I was laughing. I was, I can't believe it. This is my place. <clears throat> no more pain, no more crying, <clears throat> excuse me. And right there, when I started walking, um, something was pulling me from the back. And when I tried to look back, I saw this tunnel. And when I saw this tunnel, Randy, I saw a lot of bright light coming out of the tunnel. And I saw prayers, <clears throat> prayers coming out of the tunnel. And when I saw this prayer, it had my name. A lot of people call me like, like you know, Israel Shalom, Edgar. Oh, but they call me by my nickname. Um, um, uh, my, my last name is, 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 is a little bit like, people don't like my last name, but my last name is Babylonia. And that's in the Bible, but it's not ba not Babylon. It's Babylonia. So they will call me by my last name or the, my nickname, Bobby. And I was and I was hearing a lot of people praying and pray, thousands of people praying, like like I was in like in like in a stadium, and I could hear those voices. Like, and I looked back, and then they started calming down, and the only voices I started hearing, <coughs> my daughter, my daughters, and my wife. And I heard my daughter saying, please, Lord, don't take my dad away. Please, Lord, don't take my dad away. And when I started hearing my daughters, I looked at the lady and I started looking back and I told the lady, now they want me back. They want me to come back. My daughter wants me to come back. And I saw my grand, um, I'm not my, my daughters want me to come back. And then I, I, my granddaughters, I saw them in like in this, in this glass um, wall. And I saw my granddaughter and, and like, I, I could see my three granddaughters and I could hear my daughters and I could hear my wife. And you know what she told me, Randy? She told me, Edgar, your daughter do loves you a lot and your wife also, but they're not the only one who love you. There's a lot of people out there that really truly love you and they want to hear you. And they, wanna, and they, want, and they, are, they want you to, go, to come back. And then she told me, God had gave you an option. She didn't say God, she said the Lord. She said the Lord had given you an option to stay in the resting place, like you call it, or you could go back if you want. So I was like debating. I said, I was looking at her and was looking back. I said, oh man, why they, why they did this to me? Now I had to make a decision. And right there, I looked at her when she was holding my hand and I thought, listen, I'll go back. And then she told me then, she said, you wanna go back? Right there, she said, you see this, right there, there was on my right side, I saw this path in white with gold. It was gold, beautiful gold, indescribable gold. And when I looked at it, she said, walk through there and you're going to find something at the end of the road. And I looked at her and I started going like this, sir, God bless you, God bless you. And I started saying to everybody, God bless you. And I started calling my mom, mom, if you could hear me, I will see you soon, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna stay. So I went back, Randy. I started running and running. The love that you feel in this place is indescribable. <clears throat> I don't know how, it's like, I don't understand it. Like I do love my daughters and I, I love my wife and, and you could feel the love of the daughter, of the wife, of a husband. It's different in that place is different. You don't feel sin. You don't feel temptations. You don't feel nothing. 
you feel like you belong there you belong there and 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 then right there when i when i started walking and walking and running like a little boy to that to see i, I might see some more thing about heaven mm -mm. randy when i started walking it started getting blurry and blurry and blurry and then bright, bright white. And there I saw my hospital bed. <laughs> when I saw my hospital bed, I started laughing. I said, wow, this is nice. My hospital bed is right there. <clears throat> so I went back into the hospital. I sat in the hospital bed and I went back to sleep and boom, right there, I woke up. Mm. Wow. When, when I woke up, uh, Randy, before I say that, now that I remember the first experience that I said that the Lord told me not to, um, <clears throat> not to ever say that my judgments are not real. He did. I, I forgot to say this. He did told me, Edgar, the reason I allowed this to happen, this COVID or plaque, whatever you want, they meant according it. He told me because I am tired of sin. But mm -hmm. then he said, but I am more tired of the sin that my people, the church, is allowing. Mm. The bride of Christ is allowing. I am tired of it, Edgar. And I, I, I had to add that part because I remember why he, and I, I got, wow, that is strong, the church. Why? And right there. So that, I had to add that part, I'm sorry. So right there, <clears throat> when I went back to the hospital bed, I woke up. I, I, I didn't get up because I couldn't walk. I was nine days. I couldn't even feel my legs anymore. So <clears throat> when I, I went, I, I got up, they knock on the door. They knock and they came in. And then one of the nurse, a, a guy, nurse came in. He said, Edgar, are you okay? I looked at him. Yes, why? <laughs> he scared me the way he said. He said, because, um, are you breathing? I said, of course I'm breathing. Do you have chest pain? I said, here we go again with these questions. What is wrong? And why, why, why are you asking me this? Your heart stopped at, at the front. They have, I said, what? I touched myself. I said, I'm here. I'm here. And then he, he checked me. And guess what, Randy? He opened my, my shirt. He checked my monitor. And then the monitor, again, was all black. It was the brand new battery, completely gone. And mm. then he said, what is happening in this room? How many times are you going to be changing the battery? I said, listen, just leave the pack of battery right there because I'm, it, it might go off again. I don't know. So they changed it and it started working again. And that was, and, and right there when, I, when, I, when he left, I was just thinking about this beautiful, beautiful heaven experience. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm, about my, um, I'm still recovering. I, um, the coughing, it takes real long. Um, I even have difficulty, a little bit of difficulty breathing, but not, not that bad because he, the doctor told me it's going to take time. Because, I mean, he took my case. When he took my, 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 my record, he said, wow, this man, I, you know, he, he went into the room and he told me, you're not supposed to be alive. I mean, this is something, I mean, and then he said the same thing. Somebody has your back. And you know what I told doctor? The doctor, I remember his name, God bless him, Dr. Conan. And he told me, um, are you a Christian? And I said, yes. And then he told me, so you believe in Jesus, right? I said, yes. And then he told me, so I heard, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm sure you heard about COVID, about the vaccine, that it's not good. But I said, yes, I heard about all of that. Ah, I'm okay with that. I'll, I'll take the vaccine. I don't care. Because the vaccine has nothing to do with the Antichrist. <laughs> I mean, you know how people are. They were excited. Right now, what's happening in, in Ukraine, people are excited during World War Three. They say, this is World War III, why are we still here? You know, if World War III is going to happen, we're going to be, we're going to be going home soon or whatever, you know? So <clears throat> when I was, when he told me that, and he told me the same thing the nurse told me, enjoy your time in this room with Jesus. And the doctor told me that. Wow. I was like, this is. This <laughs> Clinicians don't say that, by the way, normally, you know, <laughs> enjoy your time with Jesus. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Uh, Usually, I, I, I've never seen, I've been in that uh, field for uh, almost 30 years, a little right. over 30 years. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's God ordained. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I mean, right there, um, I remember the, um, like the next day, 
again, <clears throat> I was sleeping <clears throat> and they called me again by my name. That voice in that room is so loud. I, I, the voice that I, that I keep, I, and I keep hearing the voice. I, I can't lie to you, Randy, I keep hearing that voice. I'm not gonna like say I hear it every day, you know? Oh, God told me this, God told me that. No, 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 no. We cannot take the name of the Lord in vain. That's very dangerous, you know? If God spoke to you, say it, just say it, you know? And you don't, and write it down, write it down, write it down, but you, you will not forget. And right there, Randy, um, that was the next day, <clears throat> um, a man came into the room and oh, I could hear his, his, I could hear his voice. He was so close to my bed. And then he said, Edgar. And I said, yes. He told me, don't move. I said, okay, I will move. So I moved a little bit and he, he, he told me, don't move. And then I saw where he put his hand in my head. He didn't touch me. He just put his hand right here. And then he started praying for me. He was praying for me, but he started saying words like he was saying, from you, Edgar, blessings will come out. From you, Edgar, healing will come out. From you, Edgar, um, blessings, healing. I forgot the other two. I, brought, I, 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 wrote, it, I wrote it down. That, Lord. But and I know this is, um, this is Israel. This is a spirit. Being yes. saying these things yes. to you, yes, yes, yes. This is uh, an angel, we're, we're presuming, or or was it G, uh, Yeshua? Do you think? I believe it was a, a um, an angel. I would dare say I didn't saw his face. I saw his hand, and um, when he told me in Spanish, he was talking to me in Spanish. He was saying, "I'm going to say it in Spanish, and I'm going to try to say it in English." He said, "De ti saldrán bendiciones, de ti saldrán sanidades." De ti saldrán heridas. And he told me, from you, blessing will come out. Healing will come out. And the other two, I can, I, can, I, can, I should write them. Lord, I should write them. But he told me these four words. When he told me four things that is going to, I was like, oh my God, I need healing. I need, am I, am I in pain? And, and do I need, did I, do I need, did I do something? I didn't understand what he was telling me. And then right there, he told me, don't move. Seven more people are going to come into the room and they want, they are going to touch you. I say seven. And right there, I saw the hands all over me, seven hands all over me, Randy. And I, and I hear him in the bed looking at them. And I, when I was looking at them, they started saying healing. They started saying blessing. They started saying anointing. They started saying all these words. Like right there, I, I started understanding what the Lord was telling me is, the calling that he has for me, which I told Lord, I'm humbling saying this, Lord, thank you. And um, when he told me that all of these things, these are the gifts that he's going to give me. He gave me four gifts that I supposed to use. And right then they left the room. And again, I woke up in my bed. And again, the nurse came in for the third time. And they say, are you, are you okay? And I say, you know what? I, I, tell, I know what you're going to ask me. You're going to ask me if I have, if I'm dizzy, if I had chest pain, blah, blah, blah. No, no, I don't have nothing of the above. And then he said, well, I need to check you. So when he checked me, again, my battery, brand new, poof, went off, burned out completely. And he, he knocked his head, he said, oh, Lord, I got to change the batteries again. I say, do it. I don't know. I don't need that. But if you want to do it, go right ahead. But they had it to monitor me, you know, from the room. So right there, they had it to change the battery again. And right there, Randy, when I had, when I, when that happened, the next day, that was my last experience. Um, they started um, um, from the 20 of my oxygen, they started putting it down to a 17. Then they, when they put it down to a, to a 12 and then to a 10. Bam, bam, bam. It started going down, down. I, I started breathing better. I mean, it was hurting me that, that, that cold air was hurting me a lot, you know, but I started breathing better. And then they, could you walk? I said, well, I need to walk because I, I don't want to be in this bed. So they, they hold me. Randy, it was horrible. But I couldn't walk. I, they had to hold me and I started gasping for air and they, they put me back in the bed. They gave me back my oxygen. And... <clears throat> So they, they, they told me not to get up from the bed. 
she tried to get out of rest. I said, yeah, but I need to move my feet, you know? So right there around that night when they left, I, 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 I tried to get up and I told the Lord, give me the strength, Lord, because I need, if you're healing me, if you, if you are, if, if you are working something in this room with me, give me my, my ox, my, my, my real air back. I don't want to have an oxygen in my, they told me that I might go home with an oxygen machine. I said, I don't want that. That would be, bring me bad memories on my mother. And I said, I don't want that. <clears throat> I got up. When I got up, I said, in the name of Yeshua, Je Jesus, I got up. And when I got up, I stand and I started breathing and breathing and breathing and breathing. Ah, oh, thank you. And I sit in the bed. Then I went back up and I started breathing. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I started, th and I started walking from my bed to the, to, the, to the bathroom, from the bathroom to the bed. And I started breathing and breathing. They got upset because my heart was going boom, boom, real, 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 you know, like real fast. They got a little bit, I said, no, don't get up, don't get up. But I, 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 I could breathe, I could breathe, you know? And I said, listen, I'm gonna be fine. Right there, I went back to the bed and I went back to sleep. And the next day I remember, um, it was around seven, about eight in the night time. That was my last experience. Right there, Randy, a man came into my room and he called me by my name. It's beautiful when they call you by your name, you know? <laughs> and they say, Edgar, I say, I'm here. And you know what I told him, who are you? And you know what he told me? He told me, I am. Oh, Lord. Mm. I say, I'm listening. Then he gave me an envelope, <clears throat> like a paper, just like this. And he told me, here. And then um, I, I say, what is this? I, I hold it in my chest and I started, I felt this little paper. And they say, he told me, those are your extra, um, in, 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 uh, um, how you say that word? Extractions, your, your, I don't know how to say it in English, intrusiones say in English, um, like, like, like the, your rules, the rules that you need to follow. Those are the rules that you need to follow. And I say, oh, okay. So I'm going home. And he told me, no, not yet. And then he told me, then what is it? He told me, those are seven instructions that you need to follow. Then he said, seven Torah. I, mm -hmm. I was, seven Torah? I was like, okay. I mean, I know what the Torah is, but seven Torah. And right there, I woke up. And thank God this idea didn't come to my room to ask me to say questions. So when I, when I woke up from, from, that, from that experience, I have a friend in my Facebook that he's from Israel. And his name is Mikael. He sings for the Lord. He has a beautiful voice. He sings for the Lord. And I wrote to him. And when I wrote, well, before I tell you this, you came to my mind, Randy. Um, um, I, your book, I took it to the hospital. I took that book to the hospital with me. I, I, I don't know how you're going to take this. I, I, the, the book, I, I love to read books, but I haven't bought a book in more than 12 years. I have not bought no more books about, because I have a book about, about heaven experience, about um, other people that have the experience as you, you have um, 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 had them in your, in your, in your, in taping. And, and like um, Brian, beautiful testimony, Jojo Morris, Unbelievable. I mean that those are testimony. And um when I when I when I when I saw you on, on YouTube, something told me, Edgar, I want you to buy his book. And I said, Wow, God, I, I have not bought a book in years. So I'm gonna buy it. So when I I, I I went to my phone and I started, I went to the app and I, I ordered the book, but it didn't went through. I said, What's wrong? I have money in my in my bank account, but it didn't went through. So next day, I called uh, Barnos and Novels here in, in what I live at in, in Schenectady, New York. This is what I live at. And when I, I called the one in next to me, like, like maybe like 20 minutes away from here. And I said, um, yes, I'm, I, they answered the phone. May I help you? I said, yes, I'm looking for a book. Um, give me the name of the author. His name is Randy Kay. Um, have an experience. And then he said, oh, OK. So two, two minutes later, he said, me, guess what? We only have one copy. I said, please hold it for me. I said, I said, hold it for me. Don't give it to no, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna go there like in, like in an hour, I'll be there. 
I said, okay, we will hold it for you. So long story short, my, my son-in-law took me to novels, novels and um, Barnos and novel. And I got up and I, I got out of the car, I ran to the store. I said, yes, I'm looking for a book that I that put to aside for me. Um, Randy K, I said, yes, right here. I, I hug your book. I said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and that same night, I started reading the book. And for a reason, I, I believe that God allowed me to buy your book because he knew what was going to happen to me. And I believe that, um, yeah, it, reading your story, I mean, I saw your testimony uh, uh, on YouTube, but when I started reading the book, the presence in the Lord, of the Lord was so strong in my room. And I would put the, when I, and when I started getting sleepy, I, would, I, I said, I don't want to miss out anything. So I put the book under my pillow. And, and right there, um, um, when, um, when, I, when I woke up from that experience, um, I did took your book to the hospital. And I remember that I heard that voice, that man, again, telling me, you need to talk to Randy. And I said, Randy, I said, well, I don't know if you have a phone number. So I was like, my, my, my eye was so blurry. I was so tired. So I went to my phone and right there, I saw your phone number. I said, let me try. And I can't believe you answered. And I don't know you like that, Randy, but I, the love that the Lord put in my heart towards you, I believe that God used you to write that book because through your book, many, many people are going to have heaven experience. Mm -hmm. Many people, I don't know if this, I know this is coming from the Lord because he told me in the hospital, you need to call him and you need to share this with him and tell him, tell Randy that through his book, many are going to have heaven experience. And they are going to talk to him and he is going to interview a lot, a lot of people. And I did not call you because I, I just called you because the Lord told me to call you. And when you answer the phone and then you say, this is Randy. And I said, this is Randy K. And you say, yes. I told you, this is Israel Shalom from Facebook. And I thank God you recognize me, you know? And when we started speaking, I mean, the presence of God was so strong because I love when you use the name of Yeshua because that's what I call them. I call him Yeshua, the Messiah, the coming King, the King of Israel. I, I don't know how soon, Randy, when the Lord is coming. I mean, but when I had those heaven experience, I even told why you didn't leave me there. I, I should have stayed there. I didn't want to come back home, but I only came back because that lady told me, not only your daughter loved you, not only your wife, but there's a lot of people out there that love you and wants to hear you. And I said, like want to hear my experience. And then when I woke up, I heard that man telling me that beautiful voice, call Randy K. And mm -hmm. I thank God for you, Randy. And I, I and you, you might laugh a little bit. I mean, I spend hours. I mean, I go to sleep at four, five in the morning, hearing all those testimonies that you put on YouTube. When I saw like two days ago, Jojo Morris, I said, "Oh my, I love this guy testimony." I I went downstairs. I told him, "Don't bother me." I got a, a nice cup of uh, uh, ice water. I sat in my bed. And I said, "I'm gonna hear this testimony," and through your those testimony of all these people that you've been interviewed, I've been getting, I've been edified. I've been getting this energy, this, I've been feeling so strong. And when I called this guy from my face with the other guy that I told you, Mike Mikael, that he's from Israel, I told him the dream that I had. He wrote back to me. And when he wrote back, long paraphrase, he wrote back to me and he told me, Edgar, oh no, he said, Israel, the vision that you had has a lot of meaning and it's a very God is dealing with you because he gave you the number seven and the number seven is the number of perfection and we know that the number six is the number of men he said and about the seven Torah yes I could help you a little bit with that in, in the book of numbers about the seven Torah but meanwhile don't worry so much about the Torah because Yeshua is the Torah follow him and when he told me that, I said, I knew it that, I mean, it's okay to, to read the Torah and, and the, uh, the, the, the law, the, the, the book of Moses, um, Deuteronomy, uh, Leviticus, all these books, Genesis. 
But Yeshua, <clears throat> when he came, he is the Torah. Yes, John chapter one, verse one. In the beginning was the word, <clears throat> and the word became flesh. Amen. Yeshua, who walked this earth. And you know, I, I, uh, I remember that call that we had uh, Israel and we become uh, friends over the airwaves um, ever since. And, and I remember when you were in the hospital and many of us and many of your friends, both close and distant, were praying for you. Uh, and what struck me as I was uh, praying for you and what was going on was that the Lord was going to use your uh, sharing your testimony of this in a profound way. As, uh, as I know he's doing right now. Um, you know, there, there are those now that uh, have, are living in fear because of COVID. And, and we know that COVID, uh, as most viruses will just iterate, you know, that is they will change or, yes. you know, morph into another type of virus and on and on. And this one seems to be uh, much more contagious and much more uh, variant than most viruses are. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one that that is, as you said, appropriately, I think, uh, a plague, a modern day plague upon uh, humankind, because across the world, uh, there have been just devastating uh, cases of this. However, having said that, you testify of, 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 of the, the joy that we can, through the midst of this storm, can experience in being uh, in his presence, and he spoke to you. And what strikes me about, and I know we're coming to a close, this is something important that's going to happen now because I think, you know, there's something, I know that there's something going to happen um, as we close this that uh, you don't want to miss because it's for you. Amen. Uh, and it's going to impact your life going forward. Um, and that presence, Israel, of the Lord, Yeshua, to you uh saying that no initially when you were on the floor and you were unconscious and he said not now you know i'm going to, I'm going to take you now and you were in the hospital the monitor three times i believe and just went kaput that is it you know went blank mm -hmm. um that was a time probably you know that doesn't happen as well in in the clinical setting unless there's uh some default caused by, uh, you know, um, a rapid, you know, energy flux within the monitor itself. Anyway, I won't get to, into the weeds and too wonky on that. But um, what I think happened is that, you know, that, that that was the time the Lord just stopped everything. You know, he stopped. Um, you had infusions uh, to keep you alive. You had uh, this going on, and that was a time when he had completely ceased that, and your life was in his hands at that point. We, we can call that clinical death, but we call it uh, just the transition to where God wanted to take you into heaven and to, to be there and giving you the choice of coming back or not coming back. And I think your testimony really speaks not only to those who have experienced COVID either um, a sickness or a death of a loved one or, or sickness themselves, but also the future. You know, we know that, that this probably is not going to go away and it has drawn so many people, young people, yes. to really face the inevitability of, of death and the hereafter. You know, for the first time, you know, pe young people think they're going to live forever oftentimes. And for the first time they're seeing their loved ones becoming sick, maybe dying themselves, maybe getting sick and what have you. And they're seeing this as, as coming home and you're speaking this now. Now the part Israel that if we can finish on this, cause I'm going to ask you to pray. And I believe that there's going to be a, through that prayer. And this is why I don't want you to miss it. If you're looking at this, don't log off now because the Lord is going to do something to you for you that will give you, um, both a peace and a healing, a peace and a healing. I believe Israel, that one of those gifts impartation was, a, was healing, a gift of healing, but also to speak his word. You know, the, the gift of prophecy in the Bible is in the Hebrew 
and Aramaic Greek translations are uh, truth telling, truth telling, speaking truth such that, that there is the Lord speaking through the one who prophesies like Elijah, like Jeremiah and other uh, prophets of old, but also, um, you know, uh, Paul in the New Testament and others were were fore it was foretelling, but also they were declaring the truth of God. We won't get into the uh, various gifts, but I believe you have that gift now to declare that. What's going to happen, I believe, Israel, is and to you viewing this and listening to it, is that you are going to experience a healing. You are going to experience a healing. Now, that healing will take different forms for you, but also there's something that's going to happen going forward that will create a peace and a joy so that you will no longer have fear, no longer have fear. So um, Israel, would you prefer to pray in Spanish or English as, as, uh, as you pray for our viewers and our listeners? I'm gonna try to pray in both language. <laughs> it's, it's up to you. We've had, uh, we've had somebody who has spoken uh, in Spanish at least once. I remember. You know, it comes through the spirit. But uh, that's entirely up to you as to uh, where you feel, uh, what you feel would, what the Lord would want to utilize. So would you pray for us, please? I will pray. And I believe that, um, that the Lord is, is um, have allowed me to go through all of this. Because like I, I had a lot of loss also in my past with my twin brother that passed away when he was 20. My mother that passed away in 2017. And a lot of people, my friends that die of COVID. And I try my best, like, this is not going to happen at my home. This is not going to enter my home, but God allowed it to enter. It hit my entire family, and thank God they made it through. And I was the only one from maybe like 30 or 40 of us that all have COVID wind up in the hospital. And... I believe that God is going to be using a lot of gifts in this end time for many, many. And my life, my life has changed, Randy. I don't feel the same anymore. I, 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 we're here for a mission. We are here to do his will. But I feel like this is, I, I finally could tell that this is not my, my eternal home. Of course not. But I believe that, I believe heaven is for real. And I also believe that hell is for real. I'm, I know one to judge, you know, where are you going? Only he knows, you know, where are we going? But I believe that day that he calls me to go home, I know where I'm going. And I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I told my family, don't be afraid. Don't be af afraid when you, I mean, it's, when you die, it's wonderful when you die in Christ. It's beautiful when you die in Christ. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop praying right now. Father, in the name of Yeshua. Right now, Padre Santo y Padre Bueno, en estos momentos, Señor Dios de la Misericordia, yo te pido, Dios Santo, por el pueblo que está escuchando, for those who are listening right now, oh Lord, for those that are listening to this beautiful heaven and even hell experience, oh Lord, that you, oh God, through this testimony, will start healing many, oh Lord, even myself, oh God, during my time, oh Lord, that I was in the hospital with this, with this COVID guy, you glorify yourself in me. And I thank you for giving me this second chance, oh Lord, hallelujah. Y te doy la gloria y la honra a ti, Señor, porque tú eres merecedor de toda alabanza y toda gloria. Y yo te pido por el pueblo, yo te pido por aquellos que están escuchando, Dios, que tú ponga tu mano sanadora, that you will put your hand of healing over them right now in the name of Yeshua Jesus. En el nombre de Yeshua Jesús, yo te pido en estos momentos, Padre de la Misericordia, que tú glorifique, te glorifique de manera especial, Dios Santo, y que ellos puedan sentir sanidad, que ellos puedan sentir bendiciones, que tú les revele el plan y el propósito. Review, the, oh Lord, your purpose in their life. Oh God, and, I, and I'm, I'm begging you and I'm, I'm asking you, Lord, that you will bless this ministry of my brother Randy K, and that many will come to you and they will listen to you, oh Lord in the time that we are living. In the name of Yeshua Messiah, we thank you, O God. Hallelujah, amen, amen, hallelujah.
Ay, gracias, Señor. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Yeshua. Hallelujah. Well, thank you. And thank you, Israel. Thank you so Amen. much. Um, if you would like to, uh, if you have a message uh, for Israel that you would like us to convey to him, uh, and from further information, you can go to the randyk.org site and you can uh, leave us a message Amen. on the contact page. Um, you know, Israel is a friend to, uh, to me and to us. And uh, I know Israel, I feel confident that we'll continue our friendship Amen. into the future. And uh, if I don't see you in person, I will see you in heaven. <laughs> that's right. Well, you know, we have the, uh, we will see, uh, you know, we're in this virtual environment, but uh, we do have the afterlife conference as well. Yes. Uh, so uh, that's on the radyk.org site. So if you're interested in participating Yes. or learning more about that, you can go to, uh, to the website for that information. And, um, you know, we'll have people like uh, Israel who will be a part of that. We'll have a focus panel uh, discussion amongst those who have gone through these kinds of uh, afterlife experiences. And then uh, we will also be praying for people. And we ha um, just, it'll be a, a first of its kind, actually, as far as I know. Amen. Uh, Christian Afterlife, uh, NDE conference uh live stream uh that will just feature so many people that uh that we've been introduced to through this uh through this wonderful experience with our beloved friends and family and that includes you mm -hmm. so until next time thank you uh israel any parting words before we say goodbye oh i could say it thank you randy for this opportunity and I had to wait so many years for all my experience that I have, I have shared with people. But like, this is my first time that I'm sharing here in, in, into your YouTube channel. And I worship God and I thank God for everything is in good time. God knows why he allowed this to you know, take all these years. You know, um, um, I, like I, I told you, I, I said I had more experience, but the deep one was when I was in the hospital with COVID. And I will tell those people who are listening, COVID is not the end of the road, no. And, and if, if we die of COVID, and if you are a Christian and, you, and you're born again in Christ, don't worry about anything. I tell people, look, dying is beautiful. I don't know. They, 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 they looked at me and they're like, what? I mean, for me it is because I didn't feel no pain when I was in that place. I didn't feel like I was choking or anything. I just wind up in this beautiful place. So my, my, my advice to everyone and is that keep looking to the, to heaven where our redemption is coming from. Amen. Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you again. And thank you for listening and watching this. Amen. Until next time, be of good cheer because heaven Amen. is in your future. Take yes. care and Shalom. God bless. Shalom. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. And if you'd like further information, go to our website at randyk.org where our mission is simple to share the great news of God's love.